Hi, this is Dr. Doug Kennedy, and I am back with you to discuss another set of information about whiplash. Today we're talking about mechanics of the whiplash injury and how this can actually create the soft tissue injuries, including brain injury, as well as the muscles in your neck and your jaw. And I'd like you to look at this uh, first image. This is from the Spine Research Institute. Again, Dr. Art Croft is one of the leaders in whiplash education. And um, this basically is going to be something that we can use to help us understand what happens during a rear end impact. So up here, we have a dummy in a car that's sitting. And this is through some of the testing. It's hit from behind, and then they have what are called accelerometers, and they are able to measure the instantaneous change, as well as high-speed video. And essentially what's going to happen, if we look at phase one in the first 100 milliseconds, now understand that it takes 1,000 milliseconds to equal one second. So this image over here of all the whiplash what happens to the car, what happens to the torso of the body, and what happens to the head. This all is occurring in about half of a second. That 500 milliseconds is about one half of a second, okay? So this is very quick. It happens before you even can respond. There's no way you, you can be bracing for this if you don't know it's gonna happen. So let's look at phase one, that first 100 milliseconds. You're hit from the rear here, this is going to, usually the car behind you is braking, so the nose is lowering. That causes that car to pitch down, which causes your car to pitch up in the front. And the back and the torso load up the seat, okay? That means the car is going forward. This big arrow shows that. And essentially, that seat is pushing into the stationary object, which is you. This is where the torso acceleration begins. The car is hit, it begins to accelerate forward. Less than a tenth of a second later, the torso, this red line, accelerates, and right behind it, less than a third of a second, the head accelerates and reaches its peak acceleration in less than one third of a second. Now, this shows what's going on here. Um, the spinal curves begin to straighten because right here the seat is going forward, the torso is accelerating and the head is being left behind. You get pressure gradients in the brain and shear forces on the brainstem right up in here. You can see there's a area of high pressure in the back of the brain and low pressure in the front and that's because the brain is sloshing backwards. That's in the first tenth of a second. Okay, let's see what happens in phase two. Going from one tenth of a second to a quarter of a second. In phase two, we get vertical motion of the torso, straightening of the spine, allowing a vertical rise of up to three and a half inches. The head snaps into full extension, extending usually over the head restraint and collapsing that head restraint, unless you have a very new car. The restraint actually acts as a fulcrum and you can see that right here, where the restraint is actually pushing the neck, holding it forward while the head comes back and over it in this direction. This is also associated with jaw injury. TMJ is called the temporomandibular joint. And this is associated with that jaw injury because there is high compression at this point in time. As the head is going forward on the lower part and coming back this way, as well as accelerating forward, you get a compression in the joint right here that actually can cause disc damage. Now let's go on to the next phase here. And I think I will zoom this in a little bit. There we go. Okay, phase three is this purple phase here. And this is where finally the head begins to snap forward again, the torso goes back down into the seat. The seat back bounce will usually increase the velocity to 30 to 70 percent more than that of the car. So you first got slammed by the seat. The seat acts like a spring in a way 
and throws the body forward and it can be anywhere from 30 to 70 percent faster than the car itself and slack is usually taken out of the shoulder harness at this point in time if we go over here we're in phase three right here phase three is here in the light purple this is where the head is at maximum acceleration the torso is already beginning to slow down the car is pretty much at a stop now okay not at a stop i'm sorry the car is not at a stop it's decelerating which means it's no longer accelerating it it hasn't begun to decelerate it's in a neutral space right there at that midline and phase four is where we get full deceleration of the head neck and torso and this is usually aggravated by the shoulder harness because that abrupt shoulder harness restraint will actually hold the torso back you'll see that over here and pull on the shoulder it also induces a bit of a rotation as the head's going forward the left shoulder of the driver is being held back more than the right shoulder and so oftentimes you'll get the uh, rotation in the neck that can create some shear forces there as well and the high brain stem spinal cord and nerve root tension develops at this point as the brain is pulled this way towards the top of the head where there's high pressure and it tractions the spinal cord so the spinal cord is under tension as well as being flexed a normal person flexing their spine without being in a car accident will exert quite a bit of tension on the spinal cord but it's usually not um, in any way painful unless they have tethering of the cord down lower when you're in an accident and this is occurring and your head is flying forward maybe weighing nine ten pounds tugging on this cord you can get quite a bit of micro trauma you get brain stem tension and once again the head is sloshing around in there now the car stops and there's apparently no structural damage to the car this car was hit at uh, eight miles an hour and apparently the bumper absorbed most of it it doesn't look there was any damage but look what's happened to the brain and look what's happened to the neck in summary when you're hit in a car accident it can be a very small car accident eight miles an hour and you can have incredible accelerations of your head over the uh, headrest if it's not positioned properly and in less in about a third or less of a second everything happens so it's, it happens boom and all you know is wow something bad happened I don't feel quite right and um, I hope I'm gonna be okay this is a quick summary of what goes on in a whiplash accident this is something that everybody should know and it's very important if you're having symptoms especially any brain cognitive thought process injury symptoms that would include dizziness, forgetfulness, brain fog or feeling just out of it, uh, fatigue, headaches, the list is quite extensive. Anything where you just don't feel right, you need to really follow up and get evaluated by a professional. So this is Doug Kennedy. I have a clinic in Boulder, Colorado. I work with car accident victims all the time and we offer a no charge consultation to anyone locally who comes into the clinic you just make an appointment we do an exam talk to you about the situation and tell you what we think check out the website that you can see at the bottom of your screen give us a call or go to the website and you can schedule there thanks for being with me keep your eyes open for another whiplash uh, video coming soon thanks again